Hi everyone, welcome to another tutorial for journal bearing. Today I would like to share a numerical design problem regarding journal bearing. In previous session we already discussed about the classification of bearing and how a journal really works and what are the design parameters behind that. So if you are a beginner, if you want to learn about the basics of journal bearing design, you have to check the playlist. I will give the link in the description please go through those lectures and you will get a basic idea regarding what we are doing in this video okay let's jump into the problem so basically in design questions what you're gonna get is some minimal information regarding the requirement so based on that requirement and some of your assumptions and a standard data which is available in data book you have to combine those information together and you have to find the proper design for the requirement. So here, this is a question. Well, let's go for the question. Design a journal bearing for a centrifugal pump with following data. Load on journal is given as 10 kN. Speed of the journal is 900 rotation per minute. And lastly, the ambient temperature or room temperature is 15 degrees celsius you could see here the information available is very minimal we have uh, three information and we know the application it is centrifugal pump most of the design question will look like this however you can have all other information from standard data book speaking about data book different universities are using different data book they are following their own standard uh, data books and industry as well based on your country you will be having different types of data on the sheets but the thing is whatever the data book that you are using the procedure and the idea behind the design is same that means you can follow the procedure in this video and if you don't have the same data book that I am using in this lecture you could find the similar equation the similar graphs and data on your data book and use that to solve your problem so this will be a kind of methodology that you can follow and all the equations and data that I will be using in SI unit the reason that I'm following SI unit, which is more internationally acceptable. And if you are using FPS or CGS or MKS, you have to convert those things as per your requirement. Okay, let's begin with the question. So before we are starting the problem, I would like to show you this is Mahadevan's data book. And I will be using for the data from this particular data book to solve the question. Okay let's go the first thing what are the data book that you are using you can see on the first page where you start journal bearing there will be the notation and the unit the reason i am showing this session because whatever the data book that you are using you have to make sure what are the unit that you are handling for example here you can see the journal diameter here it is in millimeter so if your data book express that in centimeters or in meters you have to put the data put the available data according to your data book so you have to have a look over these variables and what unit that really that data book follows in this data book you can see every unit here is in SI for example here you can see the heat generator it's joules per second that means watts so everything is in SI and we'll be following these unit in this problem okay let's begin with the question so these are the given information that we have so let's start with given data so what are the given information the first one the load we have the load equal to 10 kilo newton it is a load on the bearing so at the moment you can convert that into newton so as you know it's 10,000 newtons and speed of journal so let me write speed I denote this as n and the load it's better denote it as w and 
speed n is equal to 900 rpm so when you solve this problem sometime you need value in rotation per minute or sometimes in rps so i would like to convert this into rps i denote it in small n so divide 900 by 60 so you will get 15 rotation per second so we have those data converted and the third one the ambient temperature the ambient temperature we denote it as ta which is equal to 15 degrees celsius you need to convert it it's in standard unit okay in this question i would like to show you the procedure step by step which will be more easier to follow and remember i am afraid this video will be little lengthy because the procedure itself is little bulky when you compare with any other design process okay let me start with step one step one in step one i would like to call this as the step where we find the parameters so i can call it as find design parameters so you have to check my previous video regarding design parameters and you will get more idea regarding that on the description i will give you a link where you can download this particular note that i am creating right now so you can follow the video along with my own note okay find the parameters means there is some parameters available on given data but most of the parameters are not available here so when you get a question there is two types of journal design problems out there one is with journal diameter another one is without journal diameter and here on the given data the diameter is not given so if diameter is available there is a slight variation so however i would like to mention that the type of this problem is diameter not given we have to find the design parameters so to do that you have to check your data book i would like to make a little bit bigger so here this is my data book and on my data book i can find a table like this you can locate uh, the same on your own data book over here there is a table called uh, design data for bearing in this particular design data on the left you can have the machinery and you have to check what is the application of your particular journal bearing from the given data we know that it is for a centrifugal pump so if you check the first one is for automobile aircraft and so on and if you go and check steam locomotives are here railway cars are here gyroscope all those uh, normal applications are right here uh, and i found the last one the 17th you can see generators motors centrifugal pumps belongs to this category so from that information you have to get some standard data from it and based on that application we found some more information the first part is maximum pressure and here you can see the maximum pressure is in mega newton per meter square that is simply mega pascal and according to centrifugal pumps it should be between 0 0.7 and 1.4 mega pascal so since it's a maximum pressure we can go for the maximum uh, design situation here so i can write the p max is equal to 1.4 mega pascal so these are the data that we are extracting from data book and uh, the second thing is the absolute viscosity z in newton second per meter square that is pascal second so z is equal to there is absolute viscosity you can see 0 0.025 so the unit that you can see it here z is newton second meter square that's the reason that i told you you have to have a look at the first page so here you can see the unit for the z is absolute or dynamic viscosity simply viscosity it is newton second per meter square or pascal seconds so i can write pascal second 
then the third data the bearing characteristic number that is Zn by P Zn by P value and this value should be recommended around 29.01 and here this value you have to remember this is the tabulated value so I would like to mark it here the table value and the next information that we having here is C by R ratio you can see it here C by R ratio and L by D ratio so these are some other ratios that I discussed in previous uh, video C by R equal to and the length by diameter ratio L by D so we can have the ratios here C by R is you can see 0 0.0013 and L by D is in between 1 and 2 you can see in between 1 and 2 maybe you can go for 1 or 2 or it's okay to select some value in between that so 1.5 so remember in design process it is nothing to do with selecting exact values no one can evaluate your answer numerically so your answer will be in certain range that happens okay you can select according to your wish i would like to select in between 1.5 so that's it so this is how you take data from data book so this is what we are doing on step one finding parameters now the step two so i would like to call step two as find the diameter d that is what we are going to do in step two so to find the diameter what we can do here so the data that we extracted from the data book by using those information actually you can find D as I told you some problems the value for the D that is the general diameter will be directly available and you no need to do this thing but in this particular problem we don't have that value so we know that one thing the pressure anytime you got pressure is nothing but load over area so in previous video I already told you if you are looking into the projected area of a journal what you are going to get is the length of that journal and the diameter of that journal. So the projected area will be L into D. So the projected area will be LD. And we know that from the given information the load is nothing but 10,000 Newton divided by L into D so here we already assumed or from the data book L by D ratio L by D ratio as 1.5 so since I can write L by D is equal to 1.5 what I can write L is equal to 1.5 D that means this equation I can rewrite pressure P is equal to 10,000 divided by 1.5 D square so just replace so we got the equation we know that the pressure is maximum and we found that value is 1.4 megapascal here so what I'm going to write 1.4 is equal to 10,000 divided by 1.5 d square so it's a direct equation from these you can easily find the journal diameter so d is equal to you will get 69 millimeter from this so that's it and maybe uh, this is another scenario if you want to round up certain values in design it's okay to do that because it is not uh, constrained on a numerical values so uh, I would like to make this as 70 millimeter for the sake of easiness so the diameter of journal I would like to write 70 millimeter and if you have the diameter we know that L by D is 1.5 and L equal to 1.5 D so the length you can find easily 
So the length will be the length of journal is equal to that is 70 into 1.5 you will get 105 millimeters. So that's it we found the length and diameter. So we are done with that step. Now I'm going to step three. Step three, I would like to call this step as find the type of oil. So every step I named after what we are doing in that step. This is an important procedure when you design a journal bearing. I told you the journal bearing is nothing but you are running a shaft within a cavity filled with oil. So the selection of that oil is very important because the possibility of producing hydrodynamic action is depends upon the capacity of that oil. If you chose a wrong oil, it cannot produce a hydrodynamic action. So selection of oil is very, very important in this procedure. So let me show you how you can do it. We have certain standard oils which is available on data book and here you can see so these are the industrial standard oil SA20, SA10, SA30 like that and you have many information here but the problem with the standard data book most of the data book are expressing the viscosity of that oil in various unit. So right now we need units in kinematic viscosity and then we have to find the specific oil. I can tell you one more thing. In journal bearing, the viscosity term is always confusing. Sometimes they will express in dynamic viscosity, sometimes they will express in kinematic viscosity and in that kinematic there is uh, three or four different types of units are there. So all these expressions become confusing for you. So if you want to learn how you can handle these viscosity units, I created another video, I will put that in the description exclusively for handling viscosity unit. So if you want to become an expert or if you want to avoid confusions in your design problems, please have a look at that as well. It's also useful for your fluid dynamics lessons as well. So find the type of oil. The first thing that we have to find the kinematic viscosity from the given dynamic viscosity. So what is kinematic viscosity? Uh, I hope you know that the kinematic viscosity is nothing but the ratio of dynamic viscosity over specific gravity. That means when we call kinematic viscosity as Zk is equal to Z by rho. There is a confusion here. The unit of Kinematic viscosity is usually in meter square second, what we call it as stocks. So to get uh, stocks, since the value of Z we put in Pascal seconds, you have to multiply it with 10 to the power minus 3. So please check my separate lesson for unit conversion. For clarity, check the link in the description. So let me check uh, the data book. If you go to the first page, here you can see the Z stand for absolute dynamic viscosity. It is in Pascal second. And uh, this is kinematic viscosity Zk, which is in meter square per second. So this is the conversion. And sometimes most of the data book will be having this equation as well. Okay, here you can have the equation. You can see it here, Z is equal to rho by Zk. That means in reverse that what we are using here. So let me convert that one. The kinematic viscosity Zk is equal to the value of uh, Z that is dynamic viscosity. We have it as 0 0.025 we found in set step 1 divided by rho. So here what you can do the value for rho specific gravity you can assume it as 0 0.9 and uh, there is a reason that you, you are assuming it as 0 0.9 I will uh, explain it later. So as now if it is not given you can assume 0 0.9. So most of the time it will be on your question so you can take that value 
If it is not available directly, you can assume 0.9. So that's it. And so it is divided by 0.9 into 10 to the power minus 3. And if you solve the English with your calculator, you'll get 2.78 into 10 to the power minus 5 meter square second. So this is what the kinematic viscosity in stocks. But in our data book, we need to convert these again. You have to convert this into Sandy stocks. This is another unit, another unit for kinematic viscosity. So to do this conversion, there is a standard conversion process. We know that the kinematic viscosity is equal to Zk dash times 10 to the power minus 6. Here, Zk dash is nothing but in Sandy stocks. So uh, I'm not going to elaborate these unit thing in this video. Please check as I told you, please check my exclusive video for that. So we need this uh, kinematic viscosity in Sandy stocks because the data books, the data and graph is actually on Sandy stocks. So to find that, we know that we can write the Sandy stock value for kinematic viscosity is equal to 2.78 minus 5 divided by 10 to the power minus 6. And if you calculate, you will get 27.78 Sandy stocks. Okay. So now you will get an idea why I did this conversion. Maybe you are a little confused on this step. But when I show you the data book, you will get an idea, the whole idea regarding why we are doing this. Okay, let's take the data book. What we're going to do is we have to find the oil or the lubricant that we supposed to use for this journal bearing. So if you check your data book, you will end up with something like this, a graph. On this graph, this is a chart. Uh, you can see we have uh, various uh, units are going on here. Here you can see it is kinematic viscosity in Sandy stocks. You can see it is in Sandy stock. And on the top it is operating temperature in a degree Celsius. And on the left you have the same viscosity in Sable's seconds. You can see it here. And if your temperature in degree Fahrenheit you have to use it. So you have to convert your variables according to the data book. Maybe on your data book, you will be having dynamic viscosity directly. You can make use of that. But most of the situation, you will get graph like this. So this is the reason that I convert things into Sandy stroke stocks because we have that value on data book. Here, we got the ZK dash value that is in Sandy stock. And you can assume the operating temperature. So operating temperature, it is not given, but ambient is available. Operating is different. So operating temperature, T operating, I'm going to assume it as 70 degrees Celsius. So according to your situation, you can assume any, anything or most of the time it is available on your question. You have to choose that operating temperature. Let's take our data book. And this is the situation here. We have degree Celsius and we have uh, the Sandy stock value. Okay, this is the situation here. We have one value that is the kinematic viscosity. We know that is 27.78. So let me write the ZK dash value is 27.78 Sandy stocks. And uh, the operating temperature in degree Celsius we know that T operating is 70 degrees Celsius. First, I have to find where is my ZK dash 27.78. So we have this is 20 and 30. This is 30 and 20. So 27 will be, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units. So 22, 24, 26 and 27 is somewhere here. 
So you no need to be very accurate. Make sure it is accurate as much as you can. So right now the scan copy is a little tilted. That's the reason I'm not going to get the exact answer. But if you have a data book, you can plot it very easily. So let me draw a line. So I plotted the ZK dash value. And now I have to plot a graph for the 70 degrees Celsius, right? So this is 60 and this one is 80. So 70 degrees Celsius is definitely in between that. So I'm going to take this as 70 degree and uh, need to draw a line. Here you can see your line joining is happening here. So, once you found your point, the second thing you have to find the curve which is suitable for the point that you plotted on this graph. So, if you take the first curve, that is curve A, curve A, all the points down here, it's suitable for curve A. And if you go for curve B, all the points down there, suitable for curve B. So, in that manner, if you're getting this point, all the point under this curve G is suitable for that application. So you have to select curve G for this application. So finally, the result of this graph that we found, we have to select the curve G as an oil plot. Let's come back to the data book. So we know that we chose curve G and down there on your data book, you will find this data as well. What are the oil standard for different curves? So here the curve G stand for SA40. So that's the industrial standard for that oil. So you have to write that. And here you can see the specific gravity is 0.9. The assumption was correct. So I would like to add the reason that we took 0.9 as specific gravity. Uh, because of this uh, standard value, you can see all the values are very near to 0.9. All the values after uh, curve D will be 0.9. But in case, if the ambient temperature is other than 15 degrees Celsius, and here you can see it is at row 15. So it is in 15 degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, if you have another temperature, you can easily convert in between different values. We'll show you how you can do that here we have this equation. The specific gravity at a particular temperature, rho t is equal to rho 15 minus 0 0.0063 t0 minus 15. So if you want to find the specific gravity in any other temperature, apply this equation, get the specific gravity. That is what you need to do. Otherwise, you can simply assume it as 0.9. It is the easiest way that you can solve the question. Okay. Let's go back to our notes. So on step three, what we found, we found the oil will be SA40 and that oil will be suitable for this particular bearing. So here you can write based on graph and the ZK dash value 27.78 and operating temperature 70 degrees Celsius, select SA40 oil. So that is what we did in this step. After fixing the oil, now we can move to step four. The step four, what I call this step as check for hydrodynamic lubrication. The step four is actually a cross check whether what we did up to step three is okay or not. So as you remember on step three, what we did, we select an oil. And as in this problem, we chose SA40 oil based on the data. And now we're going to check if suppose you select that particular oil, whether that oil can make a hydrodynamic lubrication on a journal bearing that you selected. This step actually works based on this McKee's graph. So here you can see on this graph, we are plotting coefficient of friction mu over bearing characteristic number Zn by P. In this graph, you can see there is three distinct locations. The first one is thin film lubrication is marked here and the last one is thick film lubrication and between we have partial film lubrication or the partial lubrication. 
in real if you want a hydrodynamic bearing works properly without high friction that means with minimum friction and high efficiency and if you want to avoid the contact between the inner surface of the bearing and the outer surface of that journal or in other words if you clearly want to make the lubricant is fully covered over the journal you have to make sure the value of zn by p that you choose in such a way that it fall under thick film lubrication category that means in this particular space that means now we gonna calculate the zn by p the actual value of zn by p and we have to make sure it is higher than that of the minimum value of zn by p okay let me explain this through the problem so the first thing that i have to find the tabulated value of zn by p so first we chose this tabulated value from the data book hope you remember let me go back to that step we checked the data book and we found the value so here we have that value zn by p it is 29.01 so i'm going to take that value here and that value that you took initially from the data book what we call it as tabulated value from the data book table so it is 29.01 okay now we have to find the actual value of zn by p so this data is from data book now i'm going to find the actual value the actual value means the actual things that we are calculated from the particular application so here it is zn by p is the z value we took it as 0.025 from the data book times the speed it is capital n that means it is in rpm 900 is a given data divided by the pressure which is 1.4 megapascal so the actual value these are the value that we took for this journal so it will be 16.07 so let it be there now we have to calculate the minimum value for zn by p so the minimum value means here you can see there is a c minimum this particular value what we called c minimum so this is c or the bearing modulus and i call it as c minimum so this is where you find the minimum friction so as per the theory the tabulated value or the suggested value should be at least three times higher than that of the minimum value that means if a journal bearing need to produce a hydrodynamic action you have to make sure the zn by value is more than that of this minimum so here you can see the transition of thick film lubrication is actually happening here so this is the real value so if we want thick film or the stable lubrication condition we always take the zn by p value three times than that of the minimum value imagine for an example the c minimum here is 10 for the sake of safety we will take the zn by p value as 30 so that will be somewhere here so that means the practical value of zn by p will always three times higher than that of the minimum value so that is for the sake of safety nothing else so what we going to find here now we have to find the minimum value of this particular journal so what we are getting from tabulated value that is from the table we got 29.01 so that 29.01 will be somewhere here so let me it is 29.01 and as per the theory the minimum value will be third times lesser than that the minimum value will be 29.01 divided by 3 because the c minimum always we take the suggested value three times that of c minimum so what we can write the c minimum is equal to tabulated zn by p divided by 3 so it's very easy so what is 
tabulated Zn by P, we know that it is 29.01 divided by 3 and you will get 9.67. So the C minimum is 9.67 and now in this step what basically we are doing we are checking the criteria for checking if the C actual is greater than that of C minimum and we can say hydrodynamic lubrication is possible that means in case you are getting the C actually is less than C minimum. You have to change all the things that you took up to step 3. You have to uh, change the values and you have to choose another oil. Maybe you have to increase the grade of oil. Right now we choose SA40. Maybe you have to choose another oil which can produce a C actual value higher than that of C minimum. And you have to change the oil accordingly. So this is the check gate. So if you fail here, you have to change the data. So that is what we have to do. So maybe I can give you one more uh, clarity regarding this. Here the C minimum 9.67 is actually happening here. That means the minimum C value is 9.67. And on the table data book suggested you some value that is tabulated value it is happening here 29.01. But the actual value based on our calculation we got 16.07 so the actual is 16.07 here this is the scenario you can see the minimum is here the tabulated value from data book see is here and the lastly the actual value is in between so if you're getting this condition that is your actual value is greater than that of the minimum value the design is safe otherwise it is not okay so this graph Mackey's brothers graph is very important in design of journal I always suggest I made an exclusive video regarding this graph and if you check the I button you can go to that video and learn more detail about this graph that's the end of step 4 that we found the hydrodynamic lubrication is possible now we can move for step 5. I call the step 5 as find Sommerfeld's number. We denote Sommerfeld's number as S. Remember this Sommerfeld number is a kind of a variable that you are finding from a couple of equations. And the reason that we are finding that number by getting this value you can actually get some other unknown information. So let me show you how you can do it. Uh, let us take our data book. On your data book, you have to search for Sommerfeld's number. I found Sommerfeld's number equation on the data book. Here you can see there is two types of Sommerfeld's equation will be there. The first one stand for without side leakage and the second one with with side leakage. So it depends upon your question. If it is on with side leakage, you have to choose this equation. Otherwise, choose the next one. So right now I'm going to assume since it is not given, I'm assuming it was it is without side leakage. So I'm going to use that equation. So without side leakage, we have the equation here. S is equal to R by C all square into Zn by P into 10 to the power minus 6. So let me uh, take these values. So here we have R by C. We know that in previous step we already took the ratio C by R. So let me go back to step 1. We have C by R is 0 0.0013. So R by C will be inverse of this thing. So it's readily available there. And the Zn by P, remember you have to put the actual value of Zn by P p here and hereafter don't use the tabulated value so the actual value is 16.07 so, so we have these values on previous step so i can write s is equal to this is r by c we have c by r is 0 0.0013 so r by c will be 1 by 0 0.0013 
zero one three whole square times Zn by P we found on previous step is sixteen point seven. So this should be actual. Don't forget that into ten to the power minus six. So if you calculate S, you will be getting nine point five zero nine soma per minute. So this is the Sommerfeld's number that we found. Now I will show you the reason that you find Sommerfeld number. That is step six. I call the title for step six as find minimum oil film thickness. We call minimum oil film thickness as H zero. So to find that, what we need is Sommerfeld's number, nine point five zero nine soma per minute and we need one more information that is the beta angle beta angle you can assume this as 360 degree for full bearing so don't confused about this 360 degree i'll tell you what is that this will give you more detail about the beta angle assumption 360 degree means your bearing is completely covered that is 360 degree here you can see the bearing support is just 120 it's a partial and uh, this is another type it's a fitter type where the diameter of journal is higher than that of uh, bearing so whatever the case if bearing is completely covered that is full bearing the beta angle will be 360 so if it is not given on your question you have to assume this value beta equal to 360 degree so you need uh, these two information to find minimum oil thickness so let me take that book to deal with minimum oil film thickness there is a graph which represents Sommerfeld's number over minimum oil film thickness so this is a graph which represents that let's make it bigger on this graph we have two variables on x-axis you can see it is a bearing characteristic number this is the equation that we used and on y-axis we have this variable h0 by c so we have to plot the graph the first thing we have to find the Sommerfeld's number so on previous step we know that the Sommerfeld's number s is equal to 9.50 so I'm going to plot that one here you can see this is 10 and this is not a uniformly distributed graph you can see uh, the distance is different so anyway the 9 will be somewhere between 8 and 9 I'm going to take exact half so let me put my ruler here and I'm going to mark that 9.5 so it will be very near to 10 so mark it go up let it be there and we fix the beta angle that is the full journal bearing over here so you can see it is the beta so we have to fix that as well and we have to find the intersection of the Sommerfeld's number with the beta curve so the beta curve will intersect over here so that you can find this point and it's easy now just continue the graph like this join and at last we found the value corresponding to Sommerfeld's number 9.7 and the beta angle 360 degree and I'm gonna get somewhere here this will be in between 0.8 and 1 so let me take H0 by C as H0 by C which is equal to I'm gonna take uh, point 0.9 or something you will get on an actual graph this is little distorted that why I'm getting a different value if you go for your data book definitely you will get around point 0.9 so let me take it as point 0.9 that is what we found so from the graph we found h0 by c is equal to 0 0.9 corresponding to the Sommerfeld's number we found in previous step so why we found h0 by c by getting this value you can actually find 
the minimum oil film thickness H0. That means H0 will be equal to 0 0.9 into C. Now, do we have the value of C? So, we know that C is the small c is the radial clearance. So, the radial clearance C, if you don't have this value, we have C by R ratio, it's radial clearance ratio is equal to, if you check the step 1, you can find the C by R value over there. C by R ratio is from data book. We found this on step 1 is given by 0 0.0013. And we have the radius is nothing but the diameter by 2. And we found the diameter is 70 diameter of journal by 2. So it is radius will be 35 millimeters. So what we can do at 0 will be equal to we have 0.9 times C so that I can write 0 0.9 times 0 0.0013 into 35. It's simply that you multiply with radius you can cut C by R as C. So if you calculate at 0 you're gonna get 0 0.04095 millimeter so here you can see the value is very very small that means this particular oil say 40 that is what we took can produce a minimum thickness of 0 0.04 millimeter and eventually it can generate a hydrodynamic action so that's the entire idea under this step now after step 6 we can go for step 7 the step 7 I call it as find coefficient of friction. So to find coefficient of friction we have a couple of equation on the data book. Let me check a uh, data book for coefficient of friction equation and here you can see there is a couple of equation. This is one for uh, Mackey's brothers over here. You can use this equation. See. This is the most suitable. You can also use another one, but I am suggesting you to use this one. So here we have the equation. So here you have to find uh, these constants. We have Ka. So let's check Ka value on data book. Here you can see Ka value will be 0 0.195 into 10 raised to 6 for full bearing. So our case is beta is 360. So I'm going to get 0 0.195 into 10 to the power 6. And we need another constant called delta F. It is clearly given here delta F is equal to 0 0.2 for bearing having L by D 0 0.75 to 2.8. That means our L by D is 1.5. So you can take this value. It's a correction factor 0 0.002. So we found those information. And the other part we already got it from other steps. So let me calculate the coefficient of friction here. F is equal to Ka value 0 0.195 into 10 to the power 6. And Zn by P. The Zn by P we already found as 16.07 but it is very very important thing that you have to remember on the equation. On the equation you can see the N here is small letter that means that stand for RPS. But the value that we found 16.7 is stand for Z capital N by P, right? So we have Z capital N by P is equal to 16.07. So if you want to make it as in RPS, that is Z small n by P, what you can do, you just divide this value with 16. So as simple as that. So let me do that. 
so let me write divided by 60 that's the reason we are seeing a 60 here into 10 to the power minus 10 plus 0 0.002 so that's it if you calculate this one you will get coefficient of friction f is equal to 0 0.00602 so it's a coefficient of friction no units so once you get coefficient of friction this is actually a checkpoint that you have to make sure you're going in a correct direction or not the coefficient of friction between the moving journal and the bearing is very very small you can see the value is 0 0.006 that means there is almost no friction in between those uh, surfaces due to the hydrodynamic action Imagine when you calculate this thing and you are getting 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 like that. That means there is something went wrong. So on this step, you're getting a friction value like this. You're good to go for the next step. Now we can go for step 8. The step 8, I call this step as find the heat generated. We call it as Hg. This means in this step, what we are doing, we are finding how much amount of heat is actually generated from the journal and later we have to find heat dissipated and we have to check the balance so heat generated hg that you can simply find from this equation hg is equal to coefficient of friction into total load into the rubbing velocity v fwv so this equation is available on your data book let me check here you can see the equation hg is equal to f w v so here to find v we have this equation pi d n by thousand so just apply that equation you can find the velocity rubbing velocity so let me write the values we have f that we found in previous step which is 0 0.00 602 and the load w is a given data we know that it is 10,000 newtons and the rubbing velocity v is given here pi d n this is small n remember rps by 1000 d the diameter of journal we know that it is 70 the rps is 15 rotation per second by thousand and if you calculate that one you're gonna get 3.30 meter per second okay now we can directly apply this into the equation hg is equal to 0 0.00602 into 10,000 which is the load into 3.30 which is the velocity so the generated heat will be what we're going to get 198.66 so what will be the unit guess what will be the unit the unit here is newton here is meter per second so the unit will be newton meter per second so what is newton per meter second it's nothing but joules per second or it is simply watts so we can write hg is equal to 198.66 watts so you can express in joules per second or watts or whatever this is the answer 198.66 watts now since we found heat generated now we can find heat dissipated so let me call it as step 9 find heat dissipated to find heat dissipated is a little uh, overwhelming on data book but all the data are available you can apply those equation and you can find the answer so this is the equation you can see on data book heat dissipated we denote it as hd there is many equation but this is more easier hd is equal to you can see kp is a constant into ap so here k 
kp is a constant so to find that that depends upon your design it is given on your data book kp is equal to this is the equation all equation will be available on your data book just find the equation that's all tb minus ta plus 18 all square by small letter k p so this is another constant so we have to find tb minus ta first so tb means the bearing temperature ta means the ambient temperature so to get that value we have another equation tb minus ta is equal to half of t0 minus ta so by applying that equation you can easily find it so let me take it tb minus ta is equal to half of t operation minus t ambient so to get uh, this value we know that on from the given data it is half of operation we took it as 70 degree please go back and find that on my step 2 or 3 I think minus the ambient temperature we took it as 15 degree from the question and TB minus TA what we gonna get 27.5 degree Celsius so this is simply how we are finding TB minus TA right now we have to apply that on this equation and for that we need the value of kp here the small letter kp so we have the equation so there is several values 0 0.273 0 0.484 so let me assume the bearing for a medium construction so this is an assumption medium construction sometimes it available on your question so kp value will be we have 0 0.484 so what we're gonna get we got all the values that we need to find capital kp tb minus ta we know that 27.5 plus 18 all square divided by this kp small letter kp is 0 0.484 and if you calculate this one you're gonna get kp is equal to 4277.37 let it be there the reason that we find kp we need to find hd this is our requirement so to get HD we need one more value which is AP AP is nothing but the projected area so to find AP it's AC if you check my previous video the projected area is simply imagine this is our journal and we have the length and the diameter the projected area will be length into diameter so L into D so this will be L D and both are in millimeter and that's the reason we have to make it in meter square so millimeter square to meter square you have to put a 10 to the power minus 6 so AP will be the length is 105 millimeter and the diameter of the journal that we found 70 in 10 to the power minus 6 now if you calculate the projected area that we're gonna get 1.05 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square now we can easily find the dissipated heat HD heat dissipated is equal to KP AP so KP value is 4 2 this is the value 4 2 77.37 into AP value we found it here 1.05 into 10 to the power minus 4 so the heat 
dissipated will be if you calculate this one you are going to get 31.43 joules per second or watts and now we come into an end we find heat generated and heat dissipated so we have to check for heat balance here so the last step i called it as step 10 i would like to title this as check for heat balance that means you have to check heat generated minus heat dissipated so heat generated we found 198.6 is watt and heat dissipated we found 31.43 watts that means you are generating this much of energy or heat but you can only dissipate 31.4 that means there is a balance heat of 167.22 watts what is the meaning of this thing that means since heat generated is very higher than heat dissipated we have to cool the bearing externally so we have to write artificial cooling is required so on this step we are actually find the requirement of cooling so that's it once you find whether artificial cooling is required or not that's the end of the design process so there is 10 steps all these things are a little overwhelming as a design question because there is a very continuous process so you no need to mug up this step instead of that just go through the video and identify the flow of process why we are doing certain things i put these in a logical manner so that you don't need to mug up you can start from the given data and if you keep moving through your data book you can easily finalize this procedure you don't need to mug up any equation all those things are available on data book check the data book get the information follow the procedure you can finalize the design so it's a very long video thank you for watching see you again with another lecture thank you thank you all